some of the highlight points. The next um, slide that I want to take you to is uh, to focus on an area that um, doesn't really make it into the press a lot, which is Nablus. Um, Nablus is a populated area. It's about 130,000 Palestinians living in it. And um, there are a number of roads that, uh, that connect Nablus to one another. These are, as I said, the Palestinian roads. Um, but then there's a few settlements that are in the area. I think it's 14 settlements that are in the area. This next slide that you see is the overlaying of um, both the, the ex planned expansion areas of those settlements as well as, those, as well as the Israeli roads. Now, those roads are completely off limits to Palestinians. Um, alongside those off limits to Palestinians, to make sure that they are off limits to Palestinians are a series of checkpoints around the area. And so you can see how um, a city that was once a very thriving city has now been completely disconnected from other Palestinian cities. Um, the other uh, point that I wanted to get to was, was the wall. You know, interestingly, yesterday was um, the 19th anniversary of the fall of the Berlin Wall. Um, and instead of seeing the fall of the Berlin Wall, we're now actually seeing the erection of a wall that, that is um, uh, twice as high as the Berlin Wall was. Um, the first picture that you see at the top is an actual photograph of the wall as it is in East Jerusalem. The second photo, the one on the bottom, is just an artistic rendition of, um, of the wall in other parts of the West Bank. And you can, you can actually see that, um, you know, there's a big debate. A lot of uh, pro-Israel activists will say, well, it's not a wall, it's just a fence. But there's really nothing fancy ar about it. Um, it's, uh, it consists of, there's an, a fence, um, then you've got a, a ditch, there is a, um, a patrol road, then there's an electronic fence, another ditch, another patrol road, and another fence. Um, from stretching from one end of the wall to the other is an average of about 50 meters. Um, it can expand some, some places to about 60 to 70 meters. And there's observation towers that are, that are located throughout. Now, this is a wall that, um, that the International Court of Justice has deemed as being illegal, and yet um, there has been absolutely no movement done to actually um, make sure that the wall gets removed. The green line, as you see, is 320 kilometers, whereas the wall itself is 723 kilometers. So you can see that the wall is not being built on, um, on or anywhere near, in some places, the green line. But the whole idea is designed to facilitate this idea of separation, um, the idea of pushing the Palestinians into small cantons and taking as much of their land as possible. Um, of, this, of this total wall, now the, what, the wall that you see here is, um, is what has been projected, uh, what's under planned, is being planned. Um, you'll see in a second what's actually been built. You'll see um, what is being built right now and what remains to be built. Now on this next slide, is, uh, this is actual um, satellite imagery. Of, um, of a place called Kalkilia. Kalkilia is a very populated area. It's, uh, it's one of the closest areas to, um, to the sea um, and to Israeli cities. It's, it's got a population of about 55,000 Palestinians living in it. It's one of the most agriculturally fertile areas in, in the entire West Bank. And at one point in time, supplied that region supplied about 70% um, uh, of the agricultural produce in, uh, in the West Bank. Um, as you'll see, that's on, as on the, the, uh, the satellite imagery, the green line has been demarcated. You, you don't really see it when you're in the satellite or above, but uh, there it is. Um, and, but what you do see is if you can see that line that's actually being formed, you can actually see that from above. Um, and that's the wall that has been built around the Kalkilia area. As you can see that in a lot of areas, it doesn't actually even match uh, where the green line is, but goes into several kilometers into where, um, where uh, the green line is. And, and you'll see the reason why in just a second. Now, here's the, here's the, the, po the population of uh, the area of Kalkilia. Um, it consists of the city of Kalkilia as well as a number of villages. Um, and here's the reason why the wall goes so deep into the West Bank in these areas. And it's because of the presence of uh, two Israeli settlements, uh, Zafin in the north and al Menashe in the south. Both of those, as you can see, don't have a combined population of 7,000 people. Um, and yet, because of the presence of those, those people, of close to 7,000 Israeli settlers, there's been a number of, of things that have happened. One is that the wall um, goes in very deep into, into uh, the West Bank. 
And two is that the wall goes around not only the, um, the settlement of, uh, of, of Alpha Menasche, but of, around the planned expansion areas of those areas. Now here on this next slide, you're seeing some, uh, uh, some of the barriers that exist. Uh, some of them are, the, the red ones are, um, are, are gates that have no access to, for Palestinians. The green ones are um, uh, gates that have, allow for restricted access for Palestinians. And what restricted means is that uh, they're allowed to go through the gates only with a permit twice a day uh, for two hours a day. So the gates are open only two hours a day. Uh, you can go across the other side. You can fertilize your land. You can, you can do pretty much agricultural permits you can, you can get. But you have to come back, and the gates are only open um, two hours in the afternoon. Uh, the, the, there's a couple of gray ones up there that you can see. That those are only for uh, seasonal access when when it's uh, all of when it's the olive harvest. But basically, you can see what has happened with this wall is that um, the idea of of separation has been taken to new limits and new heights, which is not only to separate uh, Palestinian from Israeli, but um, to make sure that the separation actually. Uh, goes around not only the settlements, but the planned expansion area of, of those settlements. As you can see, those are the, the planned expansion area of the settlement of al Um I wanted to just highlight very quickly some of the uh, things that are going on in the, in, in the Jerusalem area. Um, sorry, just a sec. There we go. This is the, the green, the yellow areas that you see here again are the Palestinian, um, Palestinian communities within, within the Jerusalem area. The gray area that's just come up on your map is what uh, Israel defines as its municipal boundaries. As you can see, it's got it ha defines its municipal boundaries um, well within within Palestinian territory. Uh, this is again in violation of, of U.S. The U U.S. has condemned this. Um, there, I'm, what I'm going to show you here is some settlements that existed in 1987. This is when I first went to Palestine. Here are the settlements that existed in 1987, and I'm going to fast forward to what the settlements look like today in that area. Uh, but it's not just stopping there. There's also um, some, some additional planned uh, settlements that are going to be built, and the, the wall that's going up as well. And what you can see from this, from this uh, picture is that what, where the wall itself is being built, if you can sort of take a look around here, the same, the same theme as, um, as the earlier slide, which is it goes around the settlements, brings as many of the settlers in, and not only goes around as many of the settlements as possible, but tries to, tries to accommodate for um, the planned expansion areas of those settlements. Um, these are some of the, the uh, checkpoints that are in place in the Jerusalem area. And here's, again, here's some of the planned expansion areas of, the, of those settlements. Now, here's, here's an interesting thing. There's something else that um, we, we don't usually talk about or, or has been underreported, I guess, in terms, of, uh, in terms of how it is that the process of separation gets maintained. It's not just a simply a question of closure and of walls and of, um, of permits, but also of roads. And one of the, the newest tools that Israel is using is to try to create roads that are for Israeli use only. Um, it's, it's kind of an abhorrent uh, concept when you think about it. But those are some of the roads that you see that have, that have come up. Now, because the US administration has, in some cases, pressured the Israeli government that it uh, has to be a little bit kinder towards the Palestinians, um, what Israel has gone about and done is, is created some roads for Palestinians. These are inferior roads that connect Palestinian areas only to Palestinian areas. And in some cases, there's um, some you know, uh, tunnels and so on and so forth that are, that are also used. And the idea being that what, they want, what is intended to do is formalize the, set, the process of, of separation between, between the two peoples. Um, that's the Jerusalem slide. I'm just going to quit, end that quickly. This is kind of just summarizing all of this in a, in a nutshell. 